What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create a sliding door in Revit. So I'm going to be showing you how to take uh, basically a door template and then we're going to be creating a sliding door that actually opens and you're going to have a parameter so you can set it maybe in some places it's closed and some places it's going to be opening. So it's going to be a cool little parametric family. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial because it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. Also, if you want my project files like this family that I'm going to be creating right now or any of my other Revit project files, over 300 files so far, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. There you can also find, find some advanced courses. They are all over one hour long and I've got like 21 so far and I'm making new ones each week. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. So for this, I'm going to be using uh, basically Revit 2019 for now. I'm going to go here to family and I'm going to go to new and now let's search for a proper template. So for doors, we need to find a door template. So let's go. Here we have door template. Make sure you don't accidentally select the curtain wall template because it's it's quite different. So let's go with the metric door, open up, and now let's wait for a second. And there we go. So here is the template. Now here we have these, uh, like the frame, something like that. I don't really need frame for this, so I'm just going to select both of these frames and delete them. Okay, another thing that I'm going to do is make this wall a bit thicker because the sliding door is going to go actually into the wall. So I just like to have a bit more room when creating the family. So I'm just going to select maybe a generic 300 millimeter wall. Okay, the next thing that's really important is the void. So the opening in the wall, if you go here like in 3D, you're going to notice that if you select this, it's going to say opening cut. So it's not using a void, it's using something that's called an opening cut, but that creates a problem for us. So if I go here to reference plane, and if I go to maybe void form, and let's say I want to create a void that cuts into the wall, hit finish, and now go here to cut, and I try to cut the wall with this void, we're going to have a problem. It says that it cannot have an opening and a cut in the same host. So uh, a quick fix for that is to go into 3D and delete this uh, opening. So delete the opening so there is no opening in the door, then go to one of the elevations and create a new, new opening using the void uh, geometry. So just do a rectangle, simple rectangle like this, lock it to all sides, just to keep the uh, just to keep it parametric and then just go here into reference level or f floor plan and then just lock it here and lock it here and now basically we have an opening and uh, let's go into 3d okay it's still not cutting so just go here to cut select the wall first then the void and there we go we have our opening but now we can create additional openings over here by creating more voids so to do that, first I, I want to have a new parameter that's going to determine how deep the cut will go into the wall. And naturally it should be as wide as the door because it should fit the whole door. So what I'm going to do is go here to create, go to reference plane, or alternatively you can use the RP shortcut for that. And I'm just going to create a new reference plane just like this, and then go into dimension by going here to dimension, align dimension, or here on the quick access toolbar, or as you can see the shortcut is DI, and then let's create another dimension here. Now because this should share the same width as the door, or the opening, uh, you just need to select it and go here and assign a parameter. And I'm just going to assign that width parameter. And there we go, that's it. So now if I go here into my uh, type properties, family types, yeah, and if I change the width to, I don't know, like 900 millimeters, as you can see, this changed as well. And now the opening will be 900. One more thing, I want the door to same in the same place here in the wall. So what I'm going to do is go to create reference plane and then do a reference plane one like this and then another one like this. Now I'm going to add some dimensions to determine that distance. So one will be like this and the other one will be like this. So as you can see, we're basically dimensioning it from the uh, exterior face of this wall. If I select this or interior face, sorry. So yeah, 
uh, just select the top reference plane that you've created and I'm going to set that to 100 millimeters and then the bottom one is going to be uh, at 50. So we're going to have a 5 centimeter opening over here and then the 3 centimeter door will be fitting perfectly and there will be extra space. And of course make sure you lock these two dimensions so that doesn't change. So now if I select the wall and if I change it to maybe 200 millimeter, this, the cut will stay in the same place. If you change it to 150, it will stay in the same place. So it will all, always be at the same distance from the interior side. Okay, so we have all of these reference planes that are going to hold our void cut for our door and now let's create that void. So for that I'm going to go to the interior side, here we go, and now go to create, void form, void extrusion, go with a rectangle and just go like this. Okay, I'll lock it in place on all sides basically to all reference planes and then hit finish. Go into your reference level and then attach it to the inner side, lock it in place, attach it to the outer side, lock it in place and there we go. We just need to make that opening so just go to cut, select the wall first and then the void and there we go. Now if you don't see it very good I'm going to turn off uh, 10 lines and now as you can see that cut is, uh, you can see it a bit better so there we have a place where the door will be held. Now before we can place a door panel, we need to create a door panel and I like to do that by creating a nested family, so a family that's going to come into this family. So for that let's create a new family. So I'm just, I'm just going to go here to file a new uh, family. Let's go and for this I can use the just the generic family, so just metric, uh, metric generic model, hit open. And what I like to do, because as you can see now I've got multiple tabs and I don't know what is what, I'm going to delete most of these tabs and then I think, yeah, this is the only one for our generic family. So I'm just going to undock it and then dock it over here to the side. So now if I'm creating, uh, working on the panel, it's going to be here. And if I'm working on the final door family, I can just slide this over and then I can work here. So that ju that's just how I like to organize Revit when working with nested families. So I just wanted to share that uh, tip with you. Okay, so here uh, is where the panel is going to go. So I'm just going to go to front elevation and just do a simple extrusion, just a rectangle, just like that. And now let's do some dimensions. So we need dimensions. I'm going to use the shortcut DI. Measure from the bottom reference plane all the way up to the top. Place that dimension. Now select this line and or you can select the dimension and add some sort of a, a label or parameter. So because we don't have any parameters in this family, I'm just going to go here to uh, create parameter. I go to let's make it an instance parameter and this is going to be height. Okay, so we've got our height parameter all set up. Let's do the width. Again, a dimension line. First do two dimensions like this. Pull it up, hit EQ just to make that uh, distance equal. And then do one on the top here. And this one should be a parameter. So just go here to create parameter, instance parameter, and let's go with width. Hit enter. Okay, so there we go. We've got the width and height parameter. And if I change like this, as you can see, the parameters will change. Same thing. Okay, the height will change as well. Okay, so we've got that door panel. And now let's hit finish. And here for the extrusion end, I'm just going to go 15 millimeters. And for the start, uh, minus 15. So we'll have the final width of 3 centimeters or 30 millimeters. One more thing, I would like to have some sort of a door handle. It's going to be like a vertical handle, so you can just kind of grab it and slide it off to the side. So for that, let's go to create, extrusion, let's go to set work plane and set it to the, uh, like the panel like this. I go here with a simple rectangle in the middle. Kind of like that. Okay, I'm happy with this and just we need to lock it to the outside. So just go here with the dimension and lock this side. So just lock it in place and then do the same thing on the other side, lock it in place. And there we go, it works. Hit finish in here for the extrusion and let's go with 30 millimeters and go just into 3D to see what that looks like. Maybe go into thin lines. Okay, this looks perfect. Now I would like to have the material of the door set as a uh, parameter. So what I can do is go here to as associate family parameters and let's just create a new material parameter. 
and we can make it an instance parameter so you can change it by instance hit ok there we go and for the handle i doesn't have to be in a, a parameter we can just make it aluminum <coughs> So load that material in, hit apply, okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got our handle, we've got our panel, so let's put it all together in the door family. So just go here into load into project, but be, but before you do that, what I like to do is always save the family before loading in, uh, because it's going to load in as family two, and you don't want that, you want to have the real name. So I'm just going to have a save that, this family, so save as, family and let's go to desktop and let's call it I don't know like sliding door panel hit enter okay there we go load it into the project and then slide this off to the side so here is the project and as you can see here we can place it so I'm just going to place it like this and before we kind of lock it in place and add all of the other necessary dimensions and parameters what I'm going to do is just associate the parameters of the panel to the parameters of the door so before I, I can do that I can do the height immediately so I can go here to associate family parameter and add the height parameter and the thing is I don't want this panel to be uh, exactly the same width as the door just because I want it to like when it goes all the way to the other side I want uh, at least 10 centimeters popping out so you can grab the handle so what you need to do is create a new width para width parameter that has additional 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters so just go here to family types and go create a new parameter let's call it width plus 100 because 100 millimeters okay and let's make it an instance parameter okay and now we can select width go control c go here control v plus 100 there we go so it's 1000 here i can now hit apply and i don't really need that parameter for anything else but to associate it with this panel so i can go here with and let's associate it with that with plus 100 and there we go so we have that panel width. Now uh, I want to place the panel here in the middle of this. Now this is at 50, this is at 100, so the center of the panel should be at 75. So what I'm going to do is kind of place it like this. Go with DI for uh, dimension. There we go. Dimension from here to here. Place it somewhere off here to the side. Then select the door and change this dimension to 75 hit enter and of course lock it in place so it's it sticks there okay one more thing we need to have an opening parameter so I'm just going to use the arrow keys to move it off to the side a bit and now once I have that I'm just going to go with di or dimension and dimension like this over here and create a new parameter so just go new parameter let's make it an instance parameter so you can basically open up your door uh, to a different amount in, in each instance so maybe in the living room door will be completely open and then the closet door will be closed or whatever so let's call that uh, door or maybe opening parameter okay hit enter and there we go we have that opening parameter so now if you go here into uh, family types you can go to your opening parameter and you can change it to maybe 300 hit apply and now it opens up a bit more you can go to 800 hit apply and now it's completely open or maybe to 600 where it's kind of closed so you can change that position of that panel. Let's just go into 3D to see if that's in the right position. Yeah, as you can see, it's entering the wall perfectly. Okay, so we have our sliding door. Now let's test it out. And one more thing that I like to do before loading this into the project is to flex the family. So just test it out. So if I go here and make some changes, let's change the height to, I don't know, 2100 and change the width to 800. Hit apply. Okay, the door changed. Let's go here into... Yeah, it looks good. So everything changed accordingly. So that's really important. Okay, with that done, now we can load it into the project and just test it out one more time inside of a project. So I'm just going to go here to File, New, let's go to Project, uh, Architectural Template, okay. 
let's place a door here so let's just create a wall maybe a thicker wall i don't know let's go with a 250 wall okay go to our family load into the project project one okay and just go over here and as you can see you can place it on each side of the uh, the wall and there we go and now we can actually select this parameter and here we have the opening parameter so we can set it to 100 so it's almost closed or to zero apply and now it's completely closed and now if you go into 3d we have a closed door and of course we can select it and maybe opening it to like 500 hit apply there we go so there's our sliding door and we can actually we can go back into the family and uh, we can change the uh, material to this but you can actually take that parameter even further so you can change it even in the actual model so to do that just go here to uh, your family types and uh, just go with a new parameter let's make it a material parameter let's see uh, okay, let's try again. Type of parameter. Material. Okay, let's call it material. Okay, let's make it an instance parameter so you can change it for each instance. Hit apply. Okay, now you select the door, you go here to your material, and then you can associate it to the material. New, uh, new material parameter, and now when you load that into the project, again, let's reload it. Okay, override it, and now I can go here into 3D, select the door, and here I can actually change that material. Okay, I kind of misspelled it, but you get the point. So you can go here, uh, you can go and make it maybe some wood material. Let's go with birch because that's what I use for everything. Hit apply, okay, and then if we go into realistic, there we go, we have our birch wood sliding door that's going actually into the wall. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was useful and I hope you learned something new. If you want to download this project file, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. You can get this file, you can get all of my Revit project files, 300 files over there. Also, you can get access to all of my advanced courses, over uh, 21 courses so far, and they are all one hour long. Okay, so that covers it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this tutorial. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.